Hi, hello and welcome to the Minecraft Builders Con 2015. This is the cinematography uh, panel or conference, whatever you want to call it. And we are with Minecrafted Films. Hello. Hi, so how do you go online? Is it just Minecrafted Films or Jonathan? How do people know you? I prefer just Jonathan. All right, Jonathan. Um, so we've, uh, I mean, we know each other's work. We've, uh, I mean, I've, I've been watching your stuff for uh, for a bit um do you want to talk uh, you know tell the audience who you are what you do uh why you're so great and why you're doing this panel <laughs> uh, i, I, Sell I yourself, guess i'm man <laughs> i i guess i'm minecrafted films uh i've been working in minecraft for maybe about two years doing uh cinematography um i i used to be uh well i'm an ex-photographer because i used to be a photographer for my college um for the college newspaper and I kind of took that art over into Minecraft because, you know, in Minecraft you can take anything and mold it into any shape, any form, anything you want to uh, present yourself with. So uh, I took on cinematography because I like I like film, I like I like colors, I like editing, I like all that good stuff. Oh, cool! I didn't know you had that uh, photographer's yeah. past. That's great. <laughs> And as for myself, um, well, I was originally a, a director, and I, I do some photography as well. Um, but yeah, I've directed short films and documentaries and things like that. And I, my love of Minecraft starts as a builder. Uh, that's why I created LanguageCraft, uh, the, the team. Uh, but then I, more and more, I almost only film because I just love making videos. And uh, that's kind of my part in the process is... Uh, um, kind of enhancing people's other people's uh, building work uh, by filming it. Uh, and so um, in that kind of uh, direction, we were able to collaborate with this uh, convention. Uh, so that was really fun because um, something that you do a lot, and I hardly do at all, um, <laughs> is color correction. And I'm sure we'll, I mean, obviously we'll talk about it later, but this will give you an idea. If anyone's familiar with my work alone, you will right off the bat see a huge difference. Uh, and it's really great to see that those two directions come together. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, uh, Languagecraft's map for uh, this uh, MCBCon 2015 with a cinematic by uh, Bill Wright and Minecrafted Films. What? All right, wait. Let's let's do this again. Sorry, this is lagging. Is all right. Let's try this again.
And there you have it. Mm -hmm. So, this is your first time seeing the actual finished product. What do you think? Uh, it's actually pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it. Um, I, I guess I had a lot of fun making it. Um, I got to experiment with a, a lot of new effects. Mm -hmm. um, I generally went with the high contrast because there was a lot of dark colors. But in a sense, it did work out perfect. So, And it's really funny how, I mean, obviously, you know, we use, uh, I mean, I use Premiere Pro. We both use After Effects. Uh, we use Photoshop, things like that. So we use really professional grade software. And then you started telling me you, you were using uh, DaVinci Resolve and uh, Magic Bullet, things like that, which are um, pieces of software that I know of because I work in the industry and I'm interested in it. But who would have thought that that's something that we would use for Minecraft? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> is I someone... Just, uh, Go ahead. Well... I just like to, you know, bring real world things like that's something that would be used for a real movie, you know, and uh, usually I just go behind it with uh, CC toner, which is, mm -hmm. you know, another tool used for, um, you, know, you know, the color correction type deal. Yep. Um, but I wanted to test specifically with this, and this is the only time I've tested it. Well besides the MCB trailer. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think it looks really awesome, and I think I want to use more of it in the future. Definitely. And it's much quicker, isn't it, than using yeah. curves or something like that? Mm -hmm. You just apply a style and then tweak it if you need to. Yeah. Great stuff. All right, and for the rest of the... Uh, of the conference we're just going to have our videos in the background because uh, there's no use seeing us there's no use seeing in-game stuff so this is just videos that uh, are either on the uh, minecrafted films channel or on the language craft channel uh, so yeah definitely um, check them out okay so um how should we start this <laughs> we want to talk about kind of technical specs. We talked a little bit about, about software. Uh, yeah. What about like hardware? Do you, hardware? What kind of a computer do you need? Okay. So this has been something that's been debated for years uh, in general with Minecraft and mods and everything that is a complete uh, overhaul, if you will, of, of the actual game Minecraft. So I'm going to say this, um, you don't necessarily need a top-of-the-line computer to do what we do. I get a lot of questions, I get a lot of comments about people uh, who are wanting to, uh, to make cinematics, who want to get into this space, but they say they don't have the proper equipment or the proper hardware, they don't have the money, and necessarily you don't really need it because... Uh, there's mods out there that can help you uh, produce the same effect uh, that we're doing. And I've made a tutorial series about it, but I decided not to teach it because I want people to discover this stuff on their own with all due respect. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's a really hard concept to teach, but once you grasp it, then uh, you can... Pre like you could basically do anything with it. Uh, you could even take it out of the game and, and into the real life space. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, um, hardware shouldn't stop you. I mean, I've been making the my cinematics on the same computer for four years, and the actual production value and effects and everything has increased tenfold in that time. The computer hasn't changed. Um, so, I mean, for example, right now, whenever I film a cinematic, I have to speed it up in post-production. I know that I'm only going to be at 15 frames per second and I need to be at 30. Um, so I, I know that. So I can say, all right, well, if I want my final shot to be 10 seconds, then I need to film for 20. Um, it, it's simple. You just need to adapt yourself. Sure, it's more complicated than if you had a $4,000 machine, but <laughs> that's, that's fine. You'll work around if um, it's like people in the uh, cinema industry who are obsessed with what uh, camera they have, it doesn't matter. You, the camera is not gonna uh, make your movie or break it. 
Um, what about, so without kind of going into detail about how to use them, things like that, uh, let's talk briefly about the different uh, mods that you kind of need, whatever happens. Okay. So for the mods, uh, one essential mod uh, that we all know is probably Cam Studio and Shaders Mod. Uh, those are the two uh, base mods that you need for recording any in-game footage, any machinima, any cinematic, anything in Minecraft that you want to look basically really, really good. Um, there is some other mods out there that I've been looking into, like Pixel Cam and Replay Mod. Uh, Pixel Cam is basically the alternative for uh, Cam Studio since it's not properly up to date for 1.8. And uh, Replay Mod is a new mod out um, that actually records you. Well, it automatically records when you get into the game and you get to fly around as if you're actually in the game and you get to set camera points and it just has so many options. You can key out the sky and it, and everything. But the only thing is that it doesn't have shader support yet. And until it, it has does. shader support... It does. It does. Right. I know. Oh, so, okay. I talked yeah. to someone today yeah. who said, yeah, I've, been, I've had them work together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it has shader support. So um, I recommend just go check that out because it's probably the best... Uh, mod out there for filming that I've ever seen. Um, I mean, Camp Studio and Pixel Cam are good, but they're just basically base mods, like base assets to what uh, Replay Mod is. Well, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I think Pixel Cam is a poor man's camera studio, which is completely normal because Camera Studio has had years of development, which is not the case of Pixel Cam. True. Um, uh, but it has the advantage of working in 1.8. <laughs> so this cinematic, yeah, for example, was shot with Pixel Cam, and that's the very first time I've ever used it. Uh, I'm a big camera studio man myself. However, Replay Mod is indeed going to change the whole scene uh, mm -hmm. because you'll be able to do whatever you want and basically use Minecraft as a render engine rather than an actual game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the thing is, and this is more applicable to time lapses than cinematics, um, but for example, it's very important that even though you can choose your angles later, you have them in mind before you shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, and for a cinematic, that's not as true because there's no movement, there's no change. But for a time lapse, the way I frame my shot ahead of time influences how I'm going to direct my builders. Right. So. Um, yeah, don't take the easy way out. Don't think because a tool is getting so much easier to use, and I'm not sure it's going to be easier to use. Um, you still need to do all your homework ahead of time and things like that. Um, so uh, one more mod uh, we have to discuss. The, yeah, well, uh, we we mentioned Minima. Uh, no, actually we didn't yet, but... I'll, I'll oh, we did a long... I mean, 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Um, but Minima's... A good replacement for Fraps, DX Story, Action, Shadow Play, whatever you want to use, because it's made for Minecraft. Mm -hmm. And uh, I suppose you you have a lot more experience with Minima than I do. Yeah, um, I introduced him to Ma Minima when we were uh, well. When he was filming the uh, the uh, build or the uh, cinematic that we showed at the beginning of the presentation, um, Minima mod is probably the most important mod out of all of these but it has its downsides really yeah because uh my the minima mod allows you to record uh gameplay well not gameplay but slow footage down uh if you have like a really bad computer uh that's what i was saying at the beginning of the panel that it's not always about hardware it's about the person behind the hardware and Minima Mod allows you to slow down your game, and it does all that stuff for you, and it outputs at 60 FPS, uh, 30 FPS, whatever you want, and um, it also outputs in 4K resolution, different things like that. And, uh, yeah. No, yeah, I think I was kind of disappointed in that it didn't... Um it didn't revolutionize what I did, but what it does mean is that everything comes pre-done. You don't have to do any of it in post, mm -hmm. which is actually quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, 
So th there you've got a big choice, but Minima definitely, if you can start using it right from the get-go, that'll help you. And kind of the bonus things that you can use are obviously Optifine. Um, I would say that's a very important one because that'll define your kind of render distance and you can make everything, just tweak it so that it's just that much nicer, uh, that much sharper. Right. And then uh, I added as kind of extras uh, essentials, which I use for one thing that drives me nuts during cinematics and time lapses is when you see the camera's shadow. Oh, oh god! That drives me absolutely nuts, and I've covered it in several tutorials. Use essentials and do slash vanish, or simply do the potion effects. And look it up and put it for nine 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 nine, and you're good to go. You won't have a shadow. I don't know about you, but that really. Eh. <laughs> I've, uh, for me, I've, I've kind of worked around it. I've kind of did like, well, I have, um, well, another mod I use is, uh, too many items. And that has mm -hmm. like a, like a slash day feature, uh, yep. between single player and multiplayer. I use that to combat the shadows, but I'm sure there's some sort of way, um, you can go into shaders and turn that off, but I haven't figured it out and no one has. So just have to deal with it yeah you can yeah. work around it but it's important to do that though mm -hmm. um yeah and then better foliage um that's a great one i never use it because it's just a it's just that little bit too too demanding for my machine mm -hmm. uh, but that's really nice looking you use it a lot yeah and uh, and weather mod is what something just to change the weather effects i suppose yes uh weather mods uh is an extra feature that I don't nor normally use. I think I've used it for one or two cinematics. It's basically, um, it adds a wind mechanic into the game. So if you have falling leaves, you'll see them wave around in circles and stuff when a tornado comes. And yes, there's tornadoes with the mods. Uh, it sucks <laughs> up every block <laughs> in the sky and it spits it all out. Um, and then you need but, Minima for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but you could turn that feature off. But the main the main feature I use that with is probably just the wind mechanic and maybe the wa water waving because it mm -hmm. makes actual waves into the water, not like the small ones that Shader has. But, I mean, both are still good. Yeah. And uh, FYI, the cinematic is now up if you're interested at all or just wait for the end of the conference. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, all right. I think that's it for the kind of technical aspects. You have everything you need. Um, now on to the next part, which is planning, because yes, you wouldn't necessarily think so, but filming a cinematic involves a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. uh, the first part, which surprisingly enough, is often for me the longest part, is finding the music. Um, it's often a long process of just walking through the map and just having uh, a whole playlist or a whole selection of music playing and I I've got now I've got a couple places that I know I can always find something nice uh, but how do you go about uh, finding music Jonathan um, I usually uh, well if you're partnered I mean obviously you have those benefits and um, I also uh, scour YouTube for music and uh, one important thing about it is that you have to have the uh, the uh, right uh, license yes. to use music that's, that's very that's probably the biggest thing mm -hmm. um, but I usually uh, go about just going on YouTube and searching cool music cool soundtrack <laughs> but uh, not really but um, I am partnered with uh, some composers and I know some people around the space yeah that I is. think you definitely I mean there are some places where you can clearly start, like incompetech.com. What would we do without Kevin McLeod? <laughs> uh, I think everyone started there. Yeah. Uh, but then, as you, as you said, there are a lot of... I mean, there's so many music channels on YouTube. And they're, only ha they're, they're happy for you to use their music. They'll be a little bit more mm -hmm. publicity yeah, for them. Um, so either read everything and make sure that somewhere it says you can use this song, or else just contact them. Uh, this music that's playing in the background for me for, for the conference right now is Adrian von Ziegler, and he's a guy that we found by accident. And he has about 250 songs that he's published. And we bought his 
kind of complete set. And I sent him a message saying, hi, uh, can I use this? And he answered it saying, yep, go right ahead. And so now whenever, I mean, if ever I have a problem, I can just show YouTube a piece of paper saying, look, I can use this. Um, I did the same thing with uh, a lot of other artists and it works out fine. Um, so yeah, definitely find, find music that suits your map as well. That's very important. Um, as much as I love approaching Nirvana as a band and their sound, <laughs> <laughs> and I've used their music before, mm -hmm. um, but rarity and for specific things when it worked. Um, so try to find something original, try to find a piece of music that hasn't been used before. And um, that should work best for you. <laughs> yeah. Another big one is probably uh, SoundCloud. Uh, I, mm, yeah. I, I oh, made yeah. like a lot of independent uh, composers on there. And every time I ask them, hey, can I use this? Go ahead. Go, go right ahead. I mean, they're they're just friendly. They're they're open to work with you, and you know, it's just not a big hassle trying to find music. Mm -hmm. And um, but again, we we can't stress this enough. Uh, be careful of rights. Don't yes. just go using the last uh, what do you call it? Inception music or what's his mm -hmm. name? Hans Zimmer music. That just won't yeah. work. <laughs> um, and then still in planning, there's one thing that. I mean, if I may say so myself, I think it's something that sets uh, my cinematics, among others, apart from a lot of others, is a shot list. Is simply thinking about your shots ahead of time and organizing them rather than simply um, kind of sitting down and saying, oh, this shot looks good. Oh, this one looks good, too. And here, you know what? I'll actually show you the shot list. Um, <clears throat> That I did for for this, if I can pull it up. Um, do you do shot lists at all, or something like that? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, I see. That's why my cinematics are. Oh, wait, why no? <laughs> um, yeah, like uh, when when he mentioned shot shot lists to me, I was like, what? I was like, <laughs> uh, like I didn't even know he was speaking English there for a second. Because. Uh, I, I normally don't do shot lists, but I mean, I guess some people do. Um, I'm just one of those people that just film it and then if it looks good, I mean, well, obviously I preview over it and see, and see, mm -hmm. or, well, determine uh, if each shot is valuable enough sure. to show cinematic, you know. Well, I think there's a lot of, I mean, I think I push it maybe a, a little bit too far i don't know i think i'm happy with it but i don't think everyone needs to do that however i um i do think it's important to organize kind of what you're doing i think one thing that drives me mad during when i watch other cinematics is that i have no idea where i am yeah i'll see like the building from the front say oh yeah and then change uh, another shot i'm like uh where's the front i don't where am i and so that's why I tend to always organize things like go around a structure or something or simply tell a story. And it can be uh, an, an actual story with characters. I do that once in a while or simply a visual one. And I think that's that's something that you do a lot, trying to really set a mood. Yeah, I guess we're going to get into that uh, during the next section. <laughs> well, we can roll right in if you want to. Oh, OK. So, um, yeah, flow and expression, that's... That's uh, probably one of the biggest things um, that sets me apart personally from everyone making cinematics. Um, I like to uh, kind of tell a story with my cinematics. Um, not, not in a sense a vocal story, more a visual story. Like I, I, I use the soundtracks to my advantage to uh, shape uh, sort of like a... Uh, like a flow of expression, like a message almost. So for example, if you have like an emotional soundtrack, you'll see uh, the scenes kind of fade in and out and pop in when needed uh, on the beat of the track. And that's probably the most important thing that any cinematographer should, mm -hmm. uh, should go about doing. Yeah, definitely follow the flow of the music. Use it to your advantage, but don't lock yourself into it. Yes. To, you know, you need to decide when there are beats that you don't want to change on 
or even miss a beat sometimes. Have yeah. a beat go by and a second later change it because that'll bring people back into it. They'll stop being just falling asleep and they'll be like, oh, wait, that was unexpected. No. <laughs> And another good thing is uh, maybe like can camera style types like uh, there's there's like three there's three official styles well unofficial styles that I use uh, that I kind of made up on my own. Um, there's a tilt shift style which is like the miniature uh, looking style. If you look in uh, renders nowadays, you, you see that a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, not many people notice it, but I, I see it. Um, there's the hybrid tilt shift style, which is basically a manual uh, DOF over everything, and it and it kind of it kind of gives the miniature effect a little bit, but not really that much. And then there's the nor normal style, and you know that's basically what everyone does, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is perfectly fine. But you know, uh, I'm not sure I would agree with you on that. I think a oh, tilt shift or or hybrid <laughs> tilt shift are specialized shots i wouldn't call them style yeah they they are uh they are special shots and like you said they can be used for uh different things or uh well it really depends on what you're doing in a sense i mean if you're doing mm -hmm. something really emotional i mean i wouldn't use a tilt shift shot i mean that's just my preference but well you could but the, the thing i'm worried about with something like tilt shift is that i'd I'd imagine myself using it just for the sake of the effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not, exactly. it doesn't serve any purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's something that I learned in filmmaking is that when you have a, um, a shot, uh, it needs to be there for a reason. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, my effects are cool. <laughs> yeah. I remember, uh, I actually made a tilt shifted cinematic at one point, and mm -hmm. I was inspired from this uh, from this cinematic, well, this other cinematic, I think, where a guy he basically went into the lobby of a server and he did the the exact same effect. So I was like, hmm, maybe I could uh, reproduce this, and an actual cinematic. And it was, you know, it was it it was one of those uh, vi videos where it's like uh, they join the server and you could see like the little people down below, mm -hmm. and it was just. That that that's basically where I got my inspiration for making that, and and I wish I had a link to the video, but I I think it was taken down. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, that's definitely a big difference between the two of us. Is that most of my craft, if you would call it, is in camera, whereas yours is in post. Well, maybe not most, but you do a lot more post than I do. Yeah. Um. The ne next thing that's important is uh, movement. Uh, again, we have a very different approach to movement uh, <laughs> because I move a lot more. Yep. Um, I tend to, I, in, in a way, you have more realistic uh, shots. I kind of think, hey, this is Minecraft. I can do whatever I want. But at the same time, you need to be able to restrain yourself because I fly around and you know have interesting shots. But if you look closely... Uh, you'll notice they're never really, really fast. They don't turn a lot. They yeah. you you can't you can only rarely feel uh, when the you know how Camera Studio, for example, works is you have various points. You'll say point one, point two, point three, and it'll do a a spline trajectory. It says a smooth trajectory between those different points, and you want to make sure that you can't feel that jolt when it turns. Yeah, and I as I say that, I see one in one of my cinematics. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it takes years of practice, but uh, and sometimes you're just rushed and you say, "Ah, this has to come out tomorrow." Yeah. Um, basically, the message is you uh, people need to forget that they're looking through the eyes of a camera. They need to just feel like they're there or they're flying around or something like that, and that means. Um, one rule that I always apply is you are close to the building or you move fast. Never do both. Right. Uh, and there are, I mean, there are some cinematics that, or even time lapses that really, ugh, they're hard to watch. 
Yeah, one thing I, I do notice a lot is people like to go with the big lens flare type thing, and they don't actually capture the build. They capture more of the effects, mm. which is also mm -hmm. a big thing. Yes, lens flares are a plague <laughs> when misused. <laughs> Um, but yeah, just do everything, but in a measured way and in an intelligent way. Yeah. Um, as for music, well, I think we kind of touched on that already. We talked yeah. about uh, how to Split. use the music, uh, how to choose the right one. Um, so we can talk about um, about time lapses a little bit. You haven't you haven't done any, have you? Or did you no. try small ones? No, I haven't done any time lapses. <laughs> yeah, I want to. Well, they're a hard one. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, my my first time lapses aren't even in the Minecraft time lapse section of the channel anymore because you just, eh, you can't see them. <laughs> they're just not worthy. <laughs> um, but it's a it's a really hard process. Uh, it's not just. Uh, well, first of all. Having a static camera is a no-no. <laughs> Never do that. Yes, yes. Um, my first time lapse was like that, and I can't go back. And the only reason I can still watch that time lapse is because I, it was my baby, that city. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so definitely have movement. So definitely have one of those mods that we were talking about, and you need serious shot listing or at least serious thinking about what you want in the shots. Uh, you need to plan everything out. You can't just say, all right, just build, because whatever's just... not being seen by the camera has no point. Um, so you need to be organized. You need to have a team that will follow your directions. And that means, obviously, a little bit of uh, discipline. Um, and have rules like be you know again common sense uh when i uh, when we look at for example inverted time lapses which are something that we do a lot because it's just so much more convenient rather than spending uh i mean you can spend so much time on your build and then destroy it over a couple days um there are there are ob obvious rules that you need to think about um like destroying i mean jonathan how would you go about um doing the actual uh, deconstruction as a as a builder as a builder um, I'm not really a builder but I can probably put it in the best way possible maybe like uh, make sketches I guess I guess that would help sketches uh, I mean the, the actual process when, when this is a deconstruction uh, once the I, everything has been built and now you're going to break everything block by block until you get the final result which is nothing and then obviously you're going to invert the time lapse or the footage. Oh, I have an idea. <laughs> well, the key thing a... is to keep that idea of inverted and do the exact reverse of how you built it. Um, so I see so many inverted time lapses where you can tell that they just destroyed from the very top to the very bottom in just layer by layer. And what you should do instead of that is do kind of detail work and relief and then destroy the windows and then the roof then the walls then the pillars things like that you wouldn't that because that's the reverse of how you would build it mm -hmm. um so yeah just in general i think be intelligent be creative and um yeah another good thing is probably take all the concepts that we we've been talking about and kind of put it together into mm -hmm. that one final piece I think that would be good yeah oh yeah well definitely we're talking about all these things in separate bullet points uh but there are obviously things that you all need to put together mm -hmm. um and well let's see we kind of talked about what you should do and what you should help yourself from doing um are there any beginner's mistakes that come to mind jonathan probably um the FPS type thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I see cinematics in 15 FPS. Like uh, people get this just wild idea that uh, if you record a cinematic uh, and then you have it all set, it's in 50 FPS. I mean, not 50, uh, 15, and then you uh, 
you import it to Sony Vegas and then export that as 30 FPS, mm. it will be magically 30 FPS. It doesn't work with that. <laughs> um, the frames actually um, extend out, causing like a uh, hit, like maybe like a blurry effect, like a motion blur type effect, and it it, it looks really weird. Um, that's that's probably one thing I see a lot. I don't know. Oh about yeah, it. yeah. No, I, I I do see that, and <laughs> there is that myth that the eye can't see any difference between twenty four and thirty, sixty, and so on. Yeah, which is false. <laughs> yeah, it's completely it's... false. It, it really actually depends on your monitor, um, the refresh rate and things like that. Well, yeah, I don't know of any monitors that are under 60, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, under 60. So I think, I, I mean, especially for Minecraft, let's be honest, if, if for a slow cinematic like that and not for you yeah, know, exactly. actual PvP stuff, there's no use going above. I tend to judge 30. I know you do 60. Um, I think 60 might, yeah, definitely have its benefits. But above that, it's ridiculous. For that specifically, yeah. Um, so yeah, keep in mind it is important how many uh, frames per second you have, and the rest. A couple of other things that we had written down, I think we already talked about. We we're talking about constant lens flares and the camera movements. I mean, this is what we're seeing on the screen right now is one of Jonathan's um, cinematics, and it's a perfect example of what we were saying with really slow panning shots. And that's kind of the realistic aspect. I tend to like to fly around and say, hey, this is, I can do whatever I want. Uh, I'm not limited by anything. Um, but this works just as well. A lot of mood in there. <laughs> yeah, those, uh, uh, that, well, the last cinematic was probably one of my best ones. And I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of it because it's probably one of my most smoothest ones. And I used all the elements that we've talked about in that one cinematic. And uh, I, I really like it. <clears throat> yep. Very nice job. Um, all right. Well, if you have any questions, we've kind of we've been talking for 40 minutes, which was what we were aiming for. So... Um, <laughs> I guess ask them in chat will be easier than the hashtag since you're yeah, on I, I actually need to refresh mine because uh, there's like a little loading bar thing. Um, and what should we do about the French questions? Because I know we're going to get a lot of those. We'll before. translate them. Okay. But uh, yeah, if you're um, or if you're not logged into Twi Twitch or anything, just send us a hash uh, question at hashtag MCBfilm. Yep, that'd be awesome. Uh, let's see, I did see a question earlier, yeah, from Oran, who said, uh, how is the replay mod going to change your way of doing cinematics? Uh, how's it going to change? Well, um, it's just the sheer fact that you can do everything in just that mod, and you can output your own footage into, well, it's basically, um, it's not a Sony Vegas alternative, but it's close enough to it to where you could output anything you want. Uh, and there's that nifty feature where you could key out the sky so you could add your own uh, skies in there like if you want to add like a space sky and different things like that um, and uh, it's just overall smoother ca camera movement uh, there's visual points uh, that you can uh, go about doing and there's a lot of cool other things and also uh, one more feature is uh, you get to do the new YouTube uh, look around thing i forgot what they call it it's like oh, 360 yeah something. yeah you get to export the the vid or uh the cinematic or whatever you're doing into that format i haven't done it yet because it, you know I'm, I'm just not ready to use it yet uh, i've just been testing around with it and seeing things here and there but i think it's a really cool mod oh for sure that's um yeah i don't know that it <laughs> I, I haven't used it, so I'd have trouble saying how it's going to change everything for me. Um, but I think it just may make our lives easier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just maybe only as a kind of a backup solution. Because you may be filming your thing and you've got the replay mod in a corner just in case. And then something happens and you think, oh, uh, I can either kind of, I mean, I'm thinking time lapses. I can either stop the shot right away and we have to start over maybe an hour's worth of work or keep going and I'll adjust it in replay mod afterwards. 
Um, right. But for a cinematic, I'm not sure that it would. I mean, except for the the effects like keying, definitely. But I don't know if that would uh, would that change much for the way you would film a cinematic. It wouldn't change the way you plan it. I think. No, no, the planning is all the same. It's just all visual instead of just mentally, you know, visual in your mind. Yeah. But that's um, probably most. Yeah, you know, that'd be interesting. Uh, and someone's asking, uh, am I, or are we going to use the replay mod, or are you gonna, or are we gonna keep using pixel cam? <sighs> well, uh, to start off, the two mods have been developed by the same person. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that pixel cam is going to be abandoned. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there won't be much of a choice. I think we'll get uh, used to uh, uh, to replay mods, so that that won't be a problem. I really enjoy using it. I mean, uh, for me, I just like to stick with the basics, like the basic things that you would use to make a cinematic. Mm -hmm. uh, but the replay mod is really, really something to look into. It has a lot of options um, that normal mods out there in general don't really have. And uh, yeah, and it's, it's just awesome. I think it's going to be a must have pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were saying as soon as it's compatible with shaders, and now apparently it is. So I think it's a, only a matter of, you know, time, days, weeks, I don't know, until it becomes something that really works for everyone. Yeah. And the developers are working really hard, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard that, that they're really dedicated to that. All right, well, very nice. I think that's about it for, um, for uh, what do you call it, questions that I'm seeing. Anything else on Twitter? Uh, there is one guy uh, in chat. He asked, uh, where, where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I live in France. I live around Paris. Oh, there you go, Snooty. Snooty79. And, uh, and Jonathan, you live in Texas, correct? Yep, it's pretty hot and it's raining, so. Miserable weather. Yeah. But yeah, so um, I guess any parting words? We'll just wait for kind of last minute questions. But apart from that, I think we've kind of covered everything we wanted to talk about. Yep, I think that's it for me. Yeah, same. Uh, who's next? Uh, I don't think we have anyone until uh, 6 GMT. 6. Oh, wow. Four. Let me tell you that. It's a Structures Masterclass, and I do not know if it's going to be streamed. Um, I heard it was going to be streamed, maybe, in TeamSpeak. I'm not, I'm not too sure about that. Um, but... Yeah. Only time will tell. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just uh, keep at it, and uh, I don't know. I'm I'm curious to see if uh, you know how even the audience, uh, not just the people who are making cinematics, are going to see and push the whole kind of uh, uh, that area of Minecraft to go further, uh, because I'm already seeing some a lot of. Uh, cinematics makers who are kind of being left by the wayside because people are just kind of uh, bored with what they're doing yeah. uh, just thinking alright well this is the same recipe over and over and over just kind of do something new yeah that's that, that's kind of what I was talking about with styles I mean like a different style or, or a different camera angle something different would probably help that mm -hmm. a lot um, just kind of uh, sway away from being the same as everyone else and just kind of go about doing your own thing. You may come up with uh, a style or something different that we haven't seen before, which is probably the best indication that you'll probably get up there someday. Yeah. And don't, don't worry about making mistakes. Yeah. We've all made them. And I have some cinematics that I watched today that I made, I don't know, sometimes even recently, a year ago or less, and there's just that one shot where I think, oh, oh, if I could change that. 
So yeah, or you know, that may be just because you did something wrong or because you tried something new. Mm. Yeah, and that's, I get those that's good. Yeah, yeah, sure. There are so many things where I'd like to do them ag again or go back and change the video, but own it up. Accept the mistakes you've made. That's who you are. Yeah, and, and mistakes really help you, um, you know, next time when you, you know, make a cinematic and you see something wrong, you say, oh, I did that last time. You know, it won't. Like, it'll probably help you not to do it again. Definitely. Great stuff. All right. Well, um, thank you, Jonathan. This was very enjoyable. Yeah, I think it was pretty cool. I'm still nervous, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so very, I mean, I'm glad we did this. I'm glad we were able to, well, A, kind of exchange on the subject and B, collaborate. That was fun. Yeah. But yeah. All right. Well, now you all need to get out there and make stuff. Yeah. Go out there and be little cinematographer people absolutely <laughs> and if you want to check out some inspiration go to minecrafted films uh on youtube or languagecraft tv and uh, yeah you'll have hours of entertainment there <laughs> hours <laughs> well with the two together yeah yeah <laughs> maybe like maybe like two years worth of entertainment would be more sufficient yeah yeah great all right, well, thank you all for watching and listening, and we will uh, be waiting for your cinematics. All right, see ya. Great stuff. Bye.